We've all been there. Numb fingers, steamed up visor, and uncontrollable shivering. Bikes are better than cars in every single way, until winter arrives. But we all have our own ways of dealing with the cold as bikers, like the exhaust fettler. He uses every red light as an opportunity to warm his frozen fingers up. He doesn't mind the smell of burnt fuel because the hot air coming out of his silencer eases the stinging cold for a brief moment. You can't do that on an electric bike now can you? He might be exhausting to watch, but he's probably safer than the hypothermic rider. This guy swore he didn't need heated grips or winter gloves, and now he can't feel his fingers. You can spot him by his jerky pull-offs, because when your fingers are numb, your clutch and throttle control is non-existent. There's always that cheapskate who is adamant that you don't need expensive gear with thermal linings to keep warm. He can do it for just a few cents, with plastic bags over his feet in his boots and newspaper stuffed inside his jacket as a shield from the cold air, also known as the MacGyver. He'll promise you that it's no fuss at all, but never seems to notice that he's always the last one to get kitted up. Back at home, we have the procrastinator. They really want to ride their bike, but they also really don't want to be out in the cold. He stares at his bike, stares out the window, stares at his bike, looks back at photos taken in the summer, and decides on a compromise. He'll watch motorbikes on YouTube. That way he gets the joy of motorcycles while keeping warm at the same time. And as long as they subscribe to my channel, I'm okay with that. If you were to approach things logically, you'd be the brainiac. He realizes that there will be plenty more warm days to ride and that he should use today's time more effectively. Like learning something valuable on brilliant.org, who have kindly sponsored today's video. They offer thousands of lessons to further your career, learn something that fascinates you, or to brush up on something that you studied years ago. All of their courses are interesting, like AI and computer science, which will help you keep up with the times. But personally, I've really benefited from their How Technology Works course because I use it every day to make a living, so understanding it makes it safer. Their interactive graphs and beautiful charts make learning feel hands-on, more like a challenging game than a boring textbook. You can do just a few minutes every day, and they're always adding new courses. So give it a try, free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash chaos courses or clicking on the link in the description. And the first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. A steamy visor is one of my pet peeves. We call him the steamy stallion. He refuses to crack his visor open at a red light to keep the cold air outside. He tries his hardest not to breathe, but eventually he requires fresh oxygen and tries to exhale cold air only. Obviously that never works and he's just blinded by steam and forced to do the unthinkable. I personally identify as the launch lunatic. The worst part about winter for us is how slowly your bike warms up because cold oil equals no launches. It's pure torture. He often ends up taking the scenic route to his destination so his bike has time to warm up. And then he can still get in a few cheeky launches without damaging his engine. The problem with wearing nice warm motorcycle gear is that you often don't want to take it off when you get where you're going. They're known as the anti-squid. He's the opposite of the guy who wears shorts and a t-shirt on a jigsaw. He wears his buff, thermal jacket and even glove liners well into the day. To the point where he starts to look deranged. Oh, hey Gary, how's it going? After all, he's a not too distant relative of the weather watcher. He's planning to ride tomorrow. He already checked the weather earlier in the week, but he's sure that if he keeps checking it every 30 minutes, 
the weather is bound to get better. And he keeps his friends updated in the group chat as though their phones don't have a weather app. But at least those guys are brave enough to ride in the cold, unlike the betrayer, who takes the car as soon as the temperature dips into single digits, which is apparently 48 degrees Fahrenheit for you Americans. Nobody respects the betrayer, so we won't talk about him. But just know that he's already sitting in traffic, regretting his choice. But anyway, let me know which type of biker you are in winter, or if I missed your method altogether. Share this video with a friend who does one of these, and I'll see you on the next ride.